sitting around us in these rooms are the guys who are right now in charge of the world. Like I explained to you, downstairs we work in shifts and the shift is right now here in Helsinki, which means any sample we get on any platform, whether it's Windows virus or Linux virus or Mac virus or mobile virus, they are all handled here by this staff. And regardless of whether we get the sample from Europe, from Australia, from South America, from wherever, they all come here right now. They will be coming here for five more hours. Then we'll go home and the ship moves on. That's the way we work. Um, the different mechanisms that we are operating are all as automated as we can make them. I'll show you some of our lab backend systems uh, in a, a bit later. And that's something that I will ask you not to take photos of. Because it's our in-house mechanisms. But I'll warn you before I'll show you. This thing you've seen in our lobby already, it's, it's the... Uh, malware map or live world map and this is based on our own customer feedback channels so when our customers are blocking viruses on their machines some of those systems report back to us they let us know they've just stopped a virus for example here we can see different virus names that have just been blocked just a few minutes ago by our customers so some version of call home when they block a virus they'll report back to us which virus it was um, what is the timestamp? When exactly did this happen? And we also get the IP address of the computer, and we, then we use the system we've developed, which converts IP addresses into map coordinates, so we can see where in the world these attacks are coming in. And this this map is going into different modes right now. It's showing real time, so you can see 11:39, which is three minutes ago. So it's almost real time. And then it will sh shift modes and show you the last hour, show you the last 24 hours, show Europe in, in detail and so on. And we're mostly using these kind of mechanisms, not really to look at you know, individual cases, that's not really interesting. But of course, a active hotspots start to glow in red, as you can see in here. But we mostly use this to monitor if there are big changes in the level of activity, which is shown in here. So if you see big jumps suddenly, we know that something's going on. We always have a shift manager in the lab who is in charge of running everything in the lab right now. Uh, right now, shift manager is, is well, he's not in here right now, but um, it's one of the guys who's working here. And for example, he would see from here that uh, there's a big jump in activity. And we'll do whatever we need to do to fight that. And I can actually show you what it looks like when we have an outbreak. <coughs> Let's go. Uh, We have uh, um, yeah, here we go. This is a video snippet shot when we found the very first variant of Stormbird. So this is it's shot with the mobile phone camera from the same screen right here. You can see this is uh, uh, in January 2007 when the very first Stormbird outbreak started. And now it's a normal situation. Nothing special happening. But around midnight, so three hours from now, the actual outbreak starts. And you'll see what happens, what's closing down. And here we go. You see that? Millions and millions and millions of infected emails being sent all over the world. And you can see that just lighting up everywhere. Well, of course, Greenland is very nice and quiet. Nothing ever happens in Greenland. Africa is pretty quiet because the amount of computers is so slow. And now it stops. It lasted like seven hours, and then it gets back to normal. So that's the kind of activity we are watching when we're using this system. You can see different places like Canada, Finland, France, 